Hi, it's Craig from the Dive Line, and welcome to a very sunny, scorching hot Brundle on the Norfolk Broads. I have with me Dominic Miller. Dominic's an author, uh, and uh, welcome, Dominic. Hello. Dominic has a new book out called Salvamar, which I, I've read. It's a brilliant book. It's a biographical book about uh, your uncle, isn't it? And uh, uh, he was a saturation diver, amongst many other things. So. Tell us a little bit about him, Dominic, and what it was like uh, uh, growing up with this type of character as a uh, as an uncle. Oh well, yeah. I mean, no complaints there <laughs> where uncles are concerned. Uh, well, he, uh, he he was living abroad for most of the time, so I didn't really see him. So there was a lot of uh, a lot of research to be done uh, in the book, uh, you know, to fill in the gaps. That were, which there were plenty in his life because he was a little bit too quiet for uh, uh, for uh, research purposes and what have you. But uh, but yeah. So you managed to find, I understand, uh, quite a lot of letters and... Uh, yeah, little, little correspondence with um, uh, ex-girlfriends and uh, things like that. So, to, to fill in the blanks. Uh, yes, I had dialogue books, so I had to go I had to go through those. I had to understand them, um, which sometimes had to be translated by people who are far more versed on this subject than I was. So to understand, or to bring up my, my technical level, uh, my technical knowledge, I should say, um, so I could comfortably write the book and do it... At, a fairly good I wouldn't do it a disservice but that way so. yeah I mean he was a saturation diver and a, a lot of, of recreational divers will uh, probably not even know what a saturation diver is so uh, these guys are diving on things like uh, the North Sea rigs and they'll spend weeks at a time in a dive bell often down to 300 odd meters and uh, yeah, yeah. they'll leave the bell go and do an eight-hour shift on the on the, the seabed changing valves and inspecting pipes and this sort of thing I and then live in the bell not never Never surface until the the end of that time and they decompress. Yeah, I mean the only, the only time that it's, it's broken up is between the chamber is when they go to the bell and down to the bottom of the sea again. That's how they break up the board. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the worst part of it is decompression where you don't even have that to do. You're just sitting there for three, four days. Yeah. Whilst they slowly um, bring you up to the surface. So I mean everyone would be wondering and nobody tends to ask, but they obviously they've got toilet facilities in a, mm. in a dive bell. It must be quite rudimentary, I would have think. But yes, operated by somebody on the outside too. So you do your business then you have to kind of tap and then the tender on the outside has to release it but it's like an airlock it's the same as when they bring food in or anything else into the chamber itself so it's all, all held at pressure so excellent so where did it start for him where did he start diving and how did, how did you know i've read the book so i know and it's yeah, a yeah. brilliant story but but uh, <laughs> well, he lied his way into it um like a lot of them at that time 1970 um he re uh, replied to a uh, an advert uh for um, an experienced diver when he wasn't um, over the course of the day it became obvious that he wasn't particularly experienced <laughs> and the supervisor said as much at the end of the day but luckily he said that um, you know if you come back tomorrow you are experienced and you'll get full pay so that's how it started so he went from there uh, three four years later he was he was uh, training with comics but I think in between times he was working in New Zealand he was working in Dubai I think he did some stuff in the Gulf of Mexico then when he did the training in uh, in Bucksbourne house in uh, in Aberdeen with comics and then started doing surface supply stuff then did bounce diving then went into the chambers and did uh, saturation diving so yeah so the book covers the period in his life from the early 70s yes to 84 through to 1984 yeah. uh, and and he crammed into that period from from what <laughs> I read what I would dream of cramming into my whole life <laughs> is what he crammed just just the opening of the book just we don't want to give too yeah. much away but just the the opening few pages he's been chased by the Spanish maritime police and being shot at so <laughs> you get an idea of the character and you, you know it's a it's a must read if you uh, uh, got any interest in, in diving and even for those that, uh, that don't um, it's available from all the normal places I've actually thank you Dominic got a copy here that that will give away so if you yeah. subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, we will give one of these to a new subscriber and, I'll uh, sign it too. and, and it will be signed so we'll let you take it away and then you can uh, uh, sign it to the person that uh, will let you know who it's for uh, so the name of the book is Salvmar. It uh, is available on all the normal places. Uh, Amazon. I downloaded mine on my Kindle, um, and it was a, a, a thoroughly good read, as I say. So brilliant. Anything else you want to tell us, Dominic? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Excellent. So great read uh, for those of you that uh, have got a bit of time on your hands. 
Sal Vamar, uh, and it's by Dominic Miller. So if anybody wants to find out what it's like to be a commercial driver, but possibly you're too scared to actually go and do it. Because it's, uh, it's yeah, it, yeah. Especially it's, at the time, it's a very, very dangerous job. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and, uh, you know, I know a little bit, you know, I thought I knew a little bit about commercial <laughs> diving, but, but then when you read the book, you find out what you don't know, and uh, that's quite a lot for me. Um, uh, uh, you know it's a well-paid job, and when you read the book, you realise that, that they deserve every penny that they get. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, also, one thing that was, was of interest to me when I found out during the research that he did do some work on the, the early stages of the Mary Rose, and then obviously went on to do his own salvage work too. Um, you know, with the Dalhousie, which was a you know quite a, quite a chilling uh, story, which is actually in the book too about the sinking of it and then the subsequent salvage too. I don't think that's giving too much away. No, no. Again, yeah. it's uh, um, just touching on there, but the backstory yeah. and uh, uh, yeah, have a read and uh, you'll get to <laughs> learn the full details. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much for coming along, Dominic.